Uh, we're going to start the presentation again. For some reason, that always happens. Uh, and then I just have to restart the stream. Um, mods, uh, Mrs. J, if you're there, fella. The Marvin's G Mermaid. Um, just be on the lookout for yeah. any uh, haters. Back. Because I can see some of them are watching or whatever. They're lurking. Uh, evil ass names. They have the most evil screen names. But, but just get ready for them. It's weird that they're even watching, but... Anyways, maybe they'll learn something and maybe they'll move out of their parents' bedroom, basement. All right, uh, continuing on with the great state of New Hampshire. So this is the New Hampshire state flag right here. And once again, the motto is live free or die. And you can see that all over the entire state. So um, early New Hampshire, well, it was founded all the way back in 1638 by John Wheelwright. Uh, it got its name. Uh, Mason, the owner, was from Hampshire County in England, so he named it New Hampshire. It was southern middle or New England colony. It was a New England colony. In 1775, it had 81,000 people, which was a lot in that time. Some more things about New Hampshire. Well, uh, we were talking about the weather, how cold it gets. Here we can see the average temperatures of New Hampshire. Um, as you can see, uh, during the summer months, the U.S. average is in, uh, highlighted in green, and uh, the average for New Hampshire is in red, and the low is in blue. So it is below the U.S. average low, actually. Um, you know, but... Um, you know, it's not that far off, so it does have uh, somewhat cooler temperatures. Um, you know, during January and February, it can get under 10 degrees. And during June and July, August, um, it doesn't really get hotter than, uh, you know, upper 70s, really. So, uh, those are the temperatures of New Hampshire. Now, New Hampshire is actually one of the most educated states. Uh, here are some of the top most uh, educated states in the United States. Uh, New Hampshire actually has 36.9% of its residents actually have a four-year bachelor's degree. And that's incredibly high. And I think the national average is something like 24%. Uh, something else about uh, the Granite State is some more facts. Um, their population is accelerating, and that's mainly due to uh, migrants. Uh, they're having a strong migrant population is moving there uh, to fill in the uh, low-paying jobs. Uh, New Hampshire actually has the uh, second lowest unemployment in the United States. What's some more fun facts about New Hampshire? Well, uh, early New Hampshire. Um, early New Hampshire was one of the more slower developing colonies. Uh, the first colony was Little Harbor. The colony of Portsmouth was founded in 1629. Uh, some more things about New Hampshire. What was early New Hampshire like? Well, uh, they were fur traders. Some traded pine, cedar, maple, and birch trees that grew in New Hampshire, uh, but they mainly traded fur, and uh, the wood that they gathered would be used to build houses and boats. Uh, the wood pines were used for navy ships for the English, and also the white birch was a popular tree. The white birch is the state tree of New Hampshire. So, uh, some more fun facts about New Hampshire. Like I said, it was one of the first 13 colonies. The state fruit is a pumpkin. The state vegetable is a white potato. Interesting. Uh, some of the more agricultural products, I said that they were really big on dairy products. Um, a dairy cow actually produces 6.3 gallons of milk each day and 350,000 gallons of milk in a lifetime. Uh, New Hampshire is responsible for $51.8 million worth of dairy products. Hmm, interesting. Some more fun facts about New Hampshire. Uh, New Hampshire actually adopted the first legal lottery in the United States all the way back in 1963. It became popular, and, you know, before you knew it, there were, uh, you know, there were lotteries all over the United States. Now, I told you uh, New Hampshire is known for its bridges. Uh, this is a nice bridge in New Hampshire. Um, also, they're the first state to have a railroad train that actually goes up track, up mountain. It goes up to, the, to up Mount Washington, 
and it's actually still in use today too. So those are some fun facts about the uh, great state of New Hampshire. And just to let you know, my name is Mr. G. If you want to know more about me, you're watching me. Why wouldn't you want to know more about me? Well, you can learn more about me at my website, which has a bio and a lot of different things about me, different jobs that I've worked, Three different elements. things that I've been through. So uh, you can check that out on the screen MRG right here, gxnetwork.live. All right, so chatting. Live US states live geography continuing class. on, uh, let's continue with some Hashtag famous people that are from, or let's do famous inventions from New Hampshire. Well, I told you they're popular for maple syrup, right? Well, they do, they have invented more than maple syrup. Um, other things that New Hampshire uh, is known for is they actually invented the drip coffee mug, uh, came from New Hampshire. Something else that New Hampshire invented was Sarah Silverman. New Hampshire invented Sarah Silverman. <laughs> Something else uh, New Hampshire invented was the convectional oven. The conventional oven uh, was invented in New Hampshire. Another invention from New Hampshire was the alarm clock. The alarm clock came from an invention in New Hampshire all the way back in the 1700s too. So I mentioned uh, Sarah Silverman. She's from New Hampshire. Somebody else that's from New Hampshire. I mentioned Dr. Seuss. Yeah, Dr. Seuss. He is from New Hampshire. Somebody else from New Hampshire is the lovely Mandy Moore. Mandy Moore, she wants candy, is from New Hampshire. Somebody else from New Hampshire, and most of you won't know who this guy is, G.G. Allen. I barely know who he is. Punk rocker, uh, known for rubbing feces on his face, G.G. Allen. And the most famous person from, uh, the most famous actor type from New Hampshire is Adam Sandler, is from New Hampshire. So, those are uh, some famous people from New Hampshire. Isn't this so exciting? Oh my goodness gracious, I'm going New Hampshire crazy. Wow, 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 wow. Who needs GameStop stock when we have New Hampshire? Woo! -hoo! Okay, no, seriously. All right, now we're going to move on to famous foods in New Hampshire's. One, New Hampshire's. He said New Hampshire's. He's not that smart. Yeah, I am. I'm very, very smart. Anyways, uh, we're going to go over famous food in New Hampshire's, and we're going to go to wrap things up. It's going to be a pretty short uh, ending. Also, tomorrow is State's Maine. Now, I'm probably not going to be um, on time for that state because i got a lot going on tomorrow, but I do plan on uh, recording it maybe at any hour. It may be early in the morning. It may be late at night. It may be random time, but I do plan on doing that tomorrow and then uploading it, the, the uh, replay on YouTube. Also, I'm going to shave, too. So if you're watching this on YouTube, don't be a hater. If you do, you're going to go to hell. All right? Give me a thumbs up here on Twitch or on YouTube or whatever you think. Tomorrow is Jake Mermaid. All right. So, sounds good. So uh, I'm still debating. It is possible I might take tomorrow off. Thumbs underscore smiles. So, it's interesting. Thank I you, Bella. I love the food part. Thank you, Bella. Thank you, Mrs. J. We have a great food part right now today. So, let's, uh, without further ado, uh, food of the great state of New Hampshire. So, starting off here. We have a lobster pound. What's a lobster pound? Well, uh, this is what it looks like. A lobster pound... Looks like it's got a lot more than lobster there. But a lobster pound um, is not to be missed. Typically, you'll find rows of picnic tables in a large room with diners up to their elbow and lobster shells, steamers, drawn butter with an occasional stray french fry. Lobsters pulled from a tank and dunked into a steaming iron cauldron of salted water can be the main choice. But steamers and fries make it a meal. Enjoy some of the best there is as the casual, cash-only Browns Lobster Pound in Seabrook, New Hampshire. 
Wow. Like, they, their seafood is so common there, I guess. It's unbelievable. So, uh, something else, common food in New Hampshire. Up next, we have the uh, lovely and scrumptious that I like to cook a lot, French toast. And it says here, uh, 1765 Farmhouse in Wilton, New Hampshire is the perfect setting for owners Ben and Marie. Christy Reed to open their rustic yeah. coffee house. Yum. Hilltop Cafe. As former Portlandians, they understood the need for a local coffee culture. Now, Sarah makes wonderful croissants and morning dishes. Their classic French toast is decadently rich, using day-old croissants smothered with local maple syrup, blueberries, and a dollop of fresh cream. <laughs> okay, carrying on, carrying on. Up next we have... This is a, a very odd food. I've never heard of this before. But, uh, you know, special specialty of New Hampshire, guys. This is what they call a pancock. Pan pancake, excuse me, pancake. It stands to reason that a state with a serious maple syrup operation would put a high priority on pancakes. With views of the White Mountains and preserved historic properties, including the home of Robert Frost, the town of Sugar Hill holds Polly's Pancake Parlor. Try the whole grain pancakes, which are made from freshly milled flours and served with the house maple syrup. Diners can mix batters, plain, whole wheat, or buckwheat, and additions to toppings such as coconut, ginger, and blueberry. <laughs> Yummy. Up next, we have a favorite of New Hampshire, which, as I mentioned, shares a border with Canada. So this is not a surprise that poutine, poutine is a very popular dish. Natives with a strong French Canadian heritage, especially near Manchester, carry a gravy slathered torch for this iconic cheesy French fry combination. The dish is offered as a basic recipe in many bars around town, but at New England Tap House Grill and Hawk Set, the fries are given a parmesan and fresh rosemary dusting, and the gravy is enriched with the sherry peppery corn demi-glaze. Then, a heady spritz of truffle oil. Authentic? No. Worthy? Yes. Wow. A drizzle of truffle order. Okay, after poutine, we have the lovely and decadent farmhouse pate. Now, when an apple orchard opens a bistro to source hyper-locally throughout their orchards, barns and fields, New Hampshire, the oldest and largest in the state, you can find rows of apple pies and cider donuts in their market. Dash into the bistro for more than just apples, including pate graced with apples and walnuts. Hmm, sounds okay. I don't really like apples too much, to tell you the truth. All right, uh, up next we have uh, a fam favorite of New England, is that clam chowder. Clam chowder is always better within sight of the sea, especially in New England. Find it in perfect proportions at PD Summertime Seafood in Rye, Open year-round, Petey's is a favorite spot for locals and tourists alike. The chowder is not too thick or rich, with a delicate balance of potato, clam, and celery flavors. The place, including its rooftop, really hops in season, so fans know to arrive early. <laughs> okay, continuing on, continuing on. Uh, the next dish is a popular dish that I've been planning to learn how to make properly. Uh, and that is the wonderful and decadent Eggs Benedict. This looks like a Hawaiian flower there. Uh, politicians traveling through the state have made Robies and Hookset, New Hampshire, a soapbox stop for generations. Now the historic Roots Cafe at Robies Country Store is cared for by Josh and Amber Enright. Long known for their attention to culinary traditions, it's hard to find a good Eggs Benedict, and Amber takes the time to make it right with lemony hollandaise, fine local eggs, and a good measure of the past in one stop. So I guess Eggs Benedict is all about the hollandaise sauce, right? 
All right, up next after Eggs Benedict. Buddy uh, 8804. Hey, look who's here. Sid. Present. Look who decided to come to class today. He's going to learn all about lobster rolls. Right, Cody? Huh? You know about lobster rolls? We've been learning about lobster rolls all week. You know, it's popular in New England. Okay, but carrying on, carrying on. Uh, welcome, Cody. Go ahead and take a seat. Welcome to class, Cody. So, uh, lobster rolls. Most lobster rolls these days are stuffed with packaged and frozen lobster meat. Gross. Even the iconic lobster shucks on the seacoast take the time to pick from a fresh Body lobster. At Temple Street Diner Sin. in Nasha, the management lobster. knows the lobstering business and finds the best quality lobster for their rolls. For lobster lovers, no lobster roll is ever large enough. But here they offer a 20-ounce monster dressed with just about nothing, as it should be. <laughs> When's the last time you had a lobster roll, Cody? I haven't had one in generations. <laughs> no, I mean, I haven't had... <laughs> what are you saying? Your family's never had lobster? No, no, I haven't had one in... in I've, I've never had a lobster roll, actually. All right, continuing on, continuing on. Up next, we have uh, apple cider cocktails. Anybody ever had an apple cider cocktail? Well, New Hampshire is home to many apple orchards, including Applecrest, the oldest continuously operated apple orchard in the country. Beyond raw apples, cider is a local favorite. The restaurant at White Mountain Cider Company in Bartlett, just off the Appalachian Trail, uses their own very pressed cider to make a few house cocktails, including a cider-based take on the Moscow Mule and their special Cindertini. I guess it's like a martini, except with cider. Ha <laughs> ha, cider teeny. Ha 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 ha. Okay, continuing on, continuing on. Up next, uh, you know, a few more foods, a few more foods. This next food is very interesting, very interesting indeed. Uh, this is what we call wild game out in New Hampshire. Now, the great North Woods region of the state is a hunter's paradise. Uh, that's where, you know, the... Uh, winter sports in the White Mountain National Forest is. Uh, those who prefer not to bag their own moose can head to Rainbow Grill and Tavern in Pittsburgh, New Hampshire. This cozy restaurant, miles from the Canadian border, offers game as a daily special. Choices can range from elk, bison, and venison, each uniquely and masterfully prepared for a taste of the wild on a hot plate. Well, it looks pretty good except for the peas. Because I loathe peas. MRSG Mermaid said, No, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Not, not a fan for Mrs. J, no wild game. Okay, what about uh, Mrs. J? I don't think you like oysters either, huh? Every New England state seems to have oysters. Now, Great Bay in New Hampshire has a host of oyster farms, MRSG making Mermaid. nearby Portsmouth a said, great home to oyster bars. You know. Franklin Oyster House serves a nice variety of salty bivalves cultured in local waters, including the eponymous Franklin. Chef Matt Luis also prepares cooked oysters, including stewed with bacon, grilled with bone marrow, stuffed with chorizo, fried with Cajun spice, and even bacon wrapped and roasted. Wow. That, that seems like a sin, a bacon-wrapped oyster. I mean, uh, I used to go to a Seventh-day Adventist, and we weren't supposed to eat bacon or oysters, you know. So that's like a double whammy. All right, all right, double whammy, double whammy. Okay, up next, uh, another popular beverage, popular adult beverage, I should say, <laughs> in New Hampshire is whiskey. Now, Tamworth Distilling, which is a building a reputation for God and the glass spirits, does a great job using local ingredients for their inventive creations, like vodkas flavored with beetroot, sweet potato, and chicory from local farms. Their Camp Robber is kind of a brown spirit cheat until their bourbon has time to age. It takes their 16-month-old bourbon, then adds apple brandy, fresh apple cider from Carter Hill Orchard, and caramelized sugar to balance the exuberance. Wow. 
So that's a uh, quality whiskey. If you're drinking New Hampshire whiskey, um, Odie eighty eight oh four said, "I love oysters, no peas." <laughs> Up next, we have sausage. Sausage. Now the whole menu at Throwbacks Brewery in Northampton is intriguing yeah. and geared to pair L-O-L. with a generous list of stouts, porters, and lagers on tap. But one special treat is the sausage made by co-founder Nicole Carrier. She recently added charcuterie. What is that word, charcuterie, to her list of talents? Using the same commitment to historic methods that earned her a strong reputation in brewing. Autumn sausage on the charcuterie plate, a, a, kebala, a, kebasa, a kebasa, and even the chorizo and the steamed mussels are all house-made. All right, up next uh, we have the, uh, this is an odd thing I thought. Um, this is the family-style breakfast, which is popular in New Hampshire. Now, hearty breakfasts have been the fabric of New Hampshire since before it was a state. Driving hilly country roads sets the historic mood for a visit's Heritage Farm Pancake House in Sanborden. Servers here wear prairie dresses. The walls are built from wood milled from the property, and the portions are generous. Breakfast options include a list of flavored pancakes, local bacon, home fries and scrambled eggs offered family style. With a maple sugaring operation on premise, the restaurant practically demands the dishes be showered with the golden elixir. Like maple syrup is so popular there. I once knew this person from Vermont and he would pour maple syrup on everything. All right, up next is, uh, I thought this was only popular in the South, but apparently uh, chicken and waffles is actually something that's really common in New Hampshire. Yeah, New Hampshire tourists love to stay at country inns that show off the state's history. Ellis underscore smiles. The Granzig Room at Colby Inn. That looks delicious. Is a 1797 building in Henniker. It serves a local menu with a few southern style dishes. Chicken and chicken and waffles is Sit. given a New England touch you with a cider brine and maple and syrup drizzle. Mm. The chicken is succulent and perfectly crisp, and the waffles have a touch of seasonally flavored by vegetables from the local market. Say yes to zucchini waffles. So this is a more hearty chicken and waffles with the maple syrup glaze. Mmm. You can glaze that all over my... F- Never mind. <laughs> okay, continuing on, continuing on. Um, up next, uh, we have the lovely and delicious and scrumptious and mouth-watering, thirst-quenching hard cider. Crisp and tangy with a bit of everescence, hard cider is made with simple ingredients to show off the best of New Hampshire. The small North Country Cider in Rollinsford uses regular variety of local orchard apples and several combinations to produce a number of flavors from the crisp orchard press. Said, I don't get chicken and waffles. Never tried it. Uh, Well, you know, uh, I've only had it maybe once, but, you know, it seems pretty good. So, uh, something else that's very popular in... uh, the state of New Hampshire is chocolate chip Stream cookies. Elements. So that's something everybody Same. likes, right, Bella? The new merch chicken and waffles, I can understand. You know, that's H-T-T-P-S a little, little you mix some breakfast and lunch, or breakfast and dinner, right? But uh, chocolate chip cookies, that's that's everybody. I might make some chocolate chip cookies tonight. Cody 8804. So uh, New Hampshire is known for their chocolate chip cookies. Uh, chocolate if you chip have a white cookies. Castle beer, you might suggest the chicken and waffle sandwich. Okay. Chocolate chip cookies may be all American enough not to have a specific origin, but they're an especially beloved treat for picnics and hikes in New Hampshire. Head to Buckley's Bakery in Miramac, New Hampshire, for a cookie with just the amount right at chew and Christmas to satisfy without being overly sweet. Many of the chocolate chip cookies all throughout New Hampshire are known for winning awards and high prestige uh, for their 
famous cookies. So um, up next, uh, last and certainly not least, is the apple wine. Yes, I said that correctly. Uh, New Hampshire is known for their apple wine. The folks at Hermit Woods Winery in Meredith, New Hampshire, wanted to make wine that grows well in the, in the Granite State. The answers was fruit, especially apples. The rest is history. That's because fruit that doesn't doesn't score grow. Smiles. most fruit doesn't grow in cold yeah. weather. I'll try it. <laughs> the rest is history. They now specialize in fruit wines. Yeah. With grape wine. Help Mr. G with Their the sparkling harvest apple elements. wine is made from the heirloom varieties from AppleDelSlashS3Melliments.com slash MRG underscore the rest slash him. So, have any of you ever had apple wine? I've never had apple wine. But I'm drinking red wine right now. <laughs> Ah, all right. Continuing on, continuing on. So those are some of the famous foods in New Hampshire. Did you hear how some foods I think you might be crazy? No. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, don't be a hater. Give me a thumbs up. That's my new saying now. Don't be a hater. Give it a thumbs up. I put together this presentation for you guys. It was fun. I enjoyed it. And... Um, I'll show you a quick more uh, slide. Score smiles. And uh, I just want to say uh, this is the classroom Instagram delicious. on the screen. No. So if you MR want, Steve Mermaid. So if you want to join the community, inspired their meals, and if you want updates on what we're going to be routine. learning next, or if class is ever canceled or anything like that, then join the classroom the Instagram. It's on the screen right so, now. Never had poutine. I've only had like a uh, cheap poutine, not authentic poutine. I think I had McDonald's poutine or something like that. But um, but regardless, uh, I'm going to show you a few more uh, pictures of uh, New Hampshire. Then we're going to go and wrap things up. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, it was fun. Uh, we had a good class today. Thank you. Special thanks to Bella uh, for those wonderful gifts. Uh, really awesome. And... Uh, Thank you, everybody. It looks like there's a uh, lizard at the front of the house. I hope you guys Ellis learned a lot smiles. about New Hampshire. Sid, are you on YouTube? Uh, I miss you on YouTube. Yeah, uh, well, I'm going to be streaming more on YouTube, uh, Bella. Oh, yeah, well. oh, four. Um, it's just there's Sid. a lot of distractions on there. Have you ever got spam from McDonald's in Hawaii, MRG? Uh, yes, I have. They have spam at McDonald's in Hawaii. I've, I've gotten it there. With their breakfast platter. But um, one day I'll show you all the Hawaii foods. Actually, I'll do that tomorrow. Cody, if you come, to, if we cancel class tomorrow, um, I have a Hawaii gift card. Shout out to the special person who sent me the gift card. Thank you very much. And I hope you're doing well. Um, so I have a, a, a gift card to McDonald's. So what I'm going to do this weekend is I'll go to McDonald's and I'll get everything Hawaiian on the menu. And you guys can see what is to offer at McDonald's in Hawaii. So that sounds like fun, and that will be something I will do on YouTube too, because for some reason my phone doesn't do that on Twitch. <laughs> so I will do that live on YouTube at a McDonald's, possibly tomorrow. I do want to do tomorrow's class main, uh, so the, the McDonald's might be sometime this weekend, uh, but once again, um, I will be doing more of that. Um, these classes I do, uh, you know, put a lot into, and I'm, you know, and I, when I start something, I'm going to finish it. So I'm going to finish all 50 Sit. states. You know? Thumbs up. Thank you, Cody. Extreme elements. And Bella, I re-play um, these. We're the live right now on Twitch. Check it out. Uh, but I do re-upload these pods slash, slash on YouTube. I re-broadcast them slash on YouTube. Live. So as soon as this class is over with, I'll download the VOD and then I'll re-upload it. I'll upload it onto YouTube. So those are the, the people that don't watch Twitch. Uh, they can rewatch the VODs on YouTube. So, so if you're watching this on YouTube, only thing I know about uh, is we've Stephen gone through about like 35 Cody states. So find your Set. state in the playlist here. Bangor. At the end of this video, you'll see a, a link to the playlist. So if you want to learn more about your state, you can click the link and learn about your more of your own state. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing the state of Maine. So... Uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to show you some wonderful 
pictures of the great state of New Hampshire and while I play the New Hampshire state song. So, uh, here's the New Hampshire flag. I know, but I love watching you live. Thank you, Bella. I, I love uh, having you in class as well. Um, you know, as this classroom grows, you know, uh, you guys are always welcome. You guys are always my top priority. Um, you guys are always going to get free text to speech, no matter if there's 100, 200 students. You guys are always going to you people will always get free TTS. New people, not so much, but new, you guys, you guys will always get free TTS. Let me go ahead. Bella, Cody, Mrs. J, Countryman, all the real ones. Sir, I'll have it set up so you guys can always G. participate in the classroom. To 1170, New Wanu Avenue, Po Box 37. You guys will always be able to participate in the classroom. And as this classroom grows, which it will, um, you know, other people, they'll have to donate to, you know, say something during the class. But you guys will always have first ability to class because I'm one of the people, I'm, people, if you know me 10 or 20 years ago, you know, I don't forget. I have a great memory and I remember the real ones. I remember when people helped me out. And I and I'll remember you guys too, you know. Once we have 100, 200 viewers again in this class, watching in this class, participating every day, you guys are going to be the top Teacher's aides, okay? Teacher's pets, <laughs> all right? So with that being said, um, thank you guys. Um, I'll be live tomorrow. Like I said, I'm going to do the McDonald's Hawaiian McBang this weekend. I have one more class this month for Maine tomorrow, so I want to knock that out. Uh, doing one more class tomorrow, that would mean I have 90% participation for the month, and 90% is good. 90% is an A, and uh, if I don't, then I'll have a B plus. There's a big difference between an A and a B plus, and I grade myself. I encourage you guys to do the same. You want to mark where you're at so you can mark your improvement, consciously and subconsciously. So I keep track of the days that I missed so far this month because Moses got sick. I missed two days. Uh, I don't want to miss three days, so I will broadcast tomorrow. It won't be at a specific time because I do have other obligations, but do look for that main stream tomorrow. All right, guys, uh, with that being said, I'm going to show you some wonderful pictures of New Hampshire. Some of them you haven't seen before. And here is the New Hampshire, Hampshire State, State song. Said, thanks, Mr. G, for another great lesson and teaching. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Mrs. J. I really uh, enjoy doing this, and I enjoy you guys' company. You guys make this happen, too. So thank you very much. Sounds like a song JR would write.
right, everybody. Have a good day. I'll see you guys later. Aloha.